Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal, and today we're diving into some serious stuff that's been weighing on my mind lately. Let's be real, following the carnivore diet isn't always rainbows and unicorns. And having been on this carnivore roller coaster for over five years now, and being lucky enough to have so many carnivore friends and mentors in my life, I've heard some stories, let me tell you. And after so many hours, days, and years spent talking about carnivore, I've got to say that there is one thing that everyone agrees is the single most dangerous mistake that is even worse than sugar, even worse than carbs. And no, this silent killer is not donuts, ice cream, salads, or even sweeteners. It's enjoyed the blind eye for way too long. And in today's video, I'm going to shed some light on what it is, why it's so dangerous, and the changes you can expect to see in your health and carnivore journey once you start avoiding it. This mistake doesn't even really discriminate against any diet. It affects people of all experience levels, background, age, or dietary commitment. So picture this, you're cruising along on your carnivore journey, feeling like you've got it all figured out. The sun is out and the future looks bright, hopeful. You're feeling like you're going to crush your goals, but then something happens. Maybe you've had a rough time at work or a fight with a loved one and you start feeling awful around the clock. Maybe you've just gotten bad news that changes the course of your life. Maybe you're dealing with a lot in your family, difficult personal relationships, or even your own health. No matter what is actually the case for you, this thing called life happens, and you've got a full plate. You feel the weight on your shoulders, and the once smooth sailing on carnivore comes to a full stop. Out of nowhere, temptation comes knocking at your door. It's that sneaky little voice whispering in your ear, or maybe it's that irresistible craving that just will not go away. You start dreaming for quick relief. Perhaps your favorite snack from another life, your guilty pleasure since childhood, your go-to breakup food, or really anything that goes against your diet. Speaking for myself and those who follow a carnivore diet, we are prone to fantasize about foods we once thought we enjoyed. Only now, in our moment of weakness, that distinction between having thought and thinking in present becomes very blurred. If cravings were a person, think about that childhood bully that picked on you at your lowest. And just like that bully, cravings love it when you're going through a rough patch. So now the whole lot of us experiencing physical cravings or thoughts of cravings get split into one of two camps. In the first camp, we have some of the most experienced, advanced, and dedicated carnivores who have lived this lifestyle for years. People in this camp might be strong enough to resist the thoughts from translating to action or have simply developed strong enough of a habit to resist breaking it. In any case, mere thoughts of these cravings is almost seen as a weakness, and you're probably feeling almost disappointed in yourself for even thinking about things that you know go against your beliefs. Now, in the second camp, we would let those whispering thoughts blossom. So when your family, friends, and pets go to sleep, you start plotting for relief. Maybe it's that little snack of cookies you kept for emergencies in your car, or that bar of chocolate you forgot about from last holiday seasons tucked away in the cupboard. It's also very likely that you even start planning planning when to do it. Now, maybe tomorrow, on your lunch break, or maybe after work. And so you inevitably and unfortunately follow through with that plan, which also most likely will lead to binging. After throwing caution to the wind and letting loose, you feel horrible, not only physically from the withdrawal, but also taking that step back. Guys, can you tell me what the number one mistake is? If it was so obvious, I wouldn't need to say it because it actually already happened. And that's because no matter which camp you fell under, you're still making the same mistake. And that mistake is feeling guilty or ashamed for having thoughts of cravings or acting on your cravings and falling off the wagon. It's incredibly important to learn how to reframe the way you perceive your failures while following a carnivore diet. But perhaps it's not so clear why it's so serious to address these feelings in the first place. So to help me explain, I'm going to bring on my coaches, Coach Raymond Nazon and Coach Emily Harvo, because they've literally helped 
thousands upon thousands of people just like you through this very mistake. So let me invite on Coach Raymond and Emily. Hi, Raymond and Emily. Hi, Bella. So my first question for you both, why is it so important to address guilt and shame and what tends to happen when it goes unaddressed? Yeah, so the biggest thing is guilt and shame, I notice that really holds us back, especially holds me back. So one of the biggest uh, examples that I have is uh, whenever I would uh, decide or not decide, just have a craving and just go for any non-carnivore foods back in the days, and then I noticed that I was so into just thinking about how poorly I did and like I have to start over again. Mm. And all of that got me to the point where my conversation was instead of the next meal, just going carnivore, I'd be like, okay, I convinced myself, wait, 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 I'll do it just perfect next week. I'll start on Monday and start it right then. Mm -hmm. So you see how delayed it becomes. And by Monday, I'm already scared of doing it. Mm -hmm. So th that's one of the reasons why I'm very big about, hey, let's leave guilt and shame aside for now, because it's just an experience. We're trying to experiment because we want to know if the food tasted the same way as it did before. And sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. So that's really my experience. And I've, I've shared this with many, many clients and that seemed to have helped them a lot on their journey. And they don't have this, oh, I need to start over again mindset. I love that. Yeah, I feel like when we can separate that guilt and shame from who we are, we take it on and we take it on as our identity and we walk around just feeling so down and being embarrassed. I was most embarrassed because my clothes fit so weird. When I was 300 pounds, I had to wear a tint dress. The only thing I could wear underneath it were leggings. They rubbed up against each other until it was raw. And I was just so embarrassed of the clothes I had to wear. Um, and as I became thinner that and lost this weight through carnivore fasting, all these things, I didn't necessarily lose the shame and the guilt. I still walked around feeling like that old self and identifying with that old fat, obese woman. Um, and so I think that that's part of the healing journey is healing our emotions and learning from each other that we are loved exactly as we are. And it doesn't matter what size we are, we still have to fix that relationship with ourselves. Thank you, coaches. My second question is, what strategies can people use to address guilt and reframe their perspective to be free from guilt and shame? The biggest one I can say that helps the best is ask yourself, is guilt or shame, shame of uh, being carnivore and still big, you know, that, that, that is a shame, just like, just like Emily said, how does that serve us? And uh, what I ask myself is if it doesn't serve me, then why would I want to do it? Now, obviously that's a logical way of approaching it, but it also helps you detach from from the actual guilt and shame because you have the curiosity so you all of a sudden say hey it's an experiment i'm doing an experiment i'm doing carnivore experiment i'm also doing an experiment in just detaching from the personal guilt and shame and that seems to help out a whole lot i love the choice to observe uh we do a lot of mirror work in SBG. we do a lot of take pictures, don't pay attention to the scale. That doesn't tell the story. And part of that journey of taking the pictures is loving the before, during, and the after. And that's part of what we're challenging people to do. Um, and I love how we do that in community. When we share these struggles in our calls, it, it changes us because we start to see each other how each, each other sees each other. I see your best. I see the best you and y'all see the best me. And it's nothing like that other script that I had in my head. So I think that shame and guilt are cured and are healed in, in community and in friendship and in relationships. My last question is, what tends to happen to people who do address guilt and shame? And do you usually see them have better carnivore results? I totally think they do. And uh, really what I see is that they'll even be able to share with me, even though if it's they felt like they had a little mistake, they love to share it. And then they actually say, oh, this is exactly what happened. Oh, I felt terrible the next day. And it was interesting how I felt terrible, what part of me felt that way. Meanwhile, I can tell you right now, if they did not disclose that to me, 
they would have buried it and they wouldn't have learned how they felt because they're like, oh, there's no way that I could feel this way. This time around, they paid attention because they don't have the guilt and shame layer on it. Our bodies don't know the difference between us, uh, you know, being in danger than us feeling guilty or shame. It's almost the same thing. So it ramps up the cortisol. Mm. The worst part is it does it as a chronic workup because it takes a while. I don't know if you've had it where you've you've been really stressed out and you can't seem to shake it off for like three or four hours just to get back to almost normal. All that time is a raised cortisol. And all of that holds on to a huge amount of weight in you, which obviously we've talked about in the in the meetings that uh, your body's protecting you from that. So what it does is this holds on to a layer of fat so that it can protect you from that actual stress because it doesn't know a difference. It doesn't know the difference between you running from a lion or getting clawed up than actually your mind making this story up. Now for all my busy carnivores and carnivore mamas watching right now who need a convenient and cheap way to stay carnivore, I highly recommend Thrive Market. For this month's box, I picked up some more Redmond salt. Steak and Butter Guy uses this every single day on his meal, so whenever I cook for him, I make sure I use the best quality salt. I also picked up some clean sugar-free beef sticks. These are made with grass-fed beef. Steak and Butter Guy also loves these as a snack. These are also great for those who are traveling and need a clean carnivore option to snack on. I also picked Picked up some rosy dishwasher detergent. All of their products are non-toxic and sustainably made. It cuts grease and grime from our carnivore plates and there are zero toxic ingredients. And the last thing that I got is their rosy laundry detergent powder. This is a great alternative to the liquid detergent because you get way more for your money. I like to shop through their app because they have a filter option where you select the keto diet. When you select the keto diet, you will see only ketogenic friendly foods, snacks, and most of them are carnivore friendly, like their pork rind chips, beef sticks, chomps, they have all of the popular brands, you are always guaranteed to get the lowest prices. If you see any lower prices elsewhere, they will always price match for you. And also shipping is always free for orders over $49. If you're interested in shopping through Thrive Market, you can check out the link in my description box or go to the URL shown on the screen, thrivemarket.com slash steakandbuttergal. You will all get 30% off your first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. Stress level can be high, you're low on sleep, you're constantly beating yourself down. It's like you have a bully inside of your own head, inside of your own life. I think that it completely makes your body feel that it's on alarm. It's high alert. Something's going to get me. And we know when that happens, like it, it immobilizes glucose and gets ready to fight stuff. And, uh, you know, your insulin goes up and uh, that's fat storage. And so, it, and it ties into that safety that absolutely the body has to feel safe to let it go, to get into a relaxed state. Um, so I think that that cortisol effect is so dangerous. Honestly, I think it's one of the most dangerous things that we can do is not facing our emotions, not dealing with our emotions, facing forward in community, changing the mindset can change everything. And then you come to situations happy and glad and proud and grounded. And that makes all the difference in your success on carnivore. What I can say is as long as we know this, we want to try to just allow it to go through our minds and just allow it to just release also, just shake it off, you know, kind of thing. And I end up having a different point of view of things. For example, uh, you know, when I go, when I used to go with, with the family and I'll eat carnivore and I'll have my plate full of carnivore um, and they'll look at me, well, you're fat, look at you. That's why, because you're eating a lot of meat, but I change it. I'm like, well, this is for me. This is what I enjoy. So I change it to say, this is what I enjoy. And I tell my family, this is what I enjoy. But what ends up happening is that I get more meat on my plate that way because I'm not ashamed of it for one. Mm -hmm. Second of all, they see that I'm really liking it. Then that changes it. The shame and guilt is all within. The reflection from the environment that without only reflects because of our feelings towards it.
it hurts to hide when you're just stuffing that down. It reminds me of uh, the beach ball where, that we're holding underwater. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of stress to hold that under. So what I see happen uh, when people are facing this and they're properly dealing with their guilt and shame, it's it comes up, the beach ball comes up, it's a release. And oftentimes as it's released, a lot of tears are shed. It's humbling to um, talk about these things with other people. And so I, I feel like tears are the windshields of the soul. And, you know, but we embrace that and we love each other through that. And so it's actually quite beautiful. It's one of the biggest transformations I see is people transforming how they feel inside and how they think about themselves and how what their identity is now when they are actually willing to be honest Face that, deal with it, and release it. I can't tell you the number of people that told me carnivore diet doesn't work because they slipped up and gave up after only one to three months on the diet. It's seriously the biggest reason why I wanted to make this video because the mistake of feeling like it's your fault and that it's your weakness in making mistakes is in itself the single biggest self-defeater holding you back from future success. No amount of any other mistake, including giving into carb and sugar cravings or even even giving into them regularly can hold you down as long as you can confront your experiences and treat them as learning lessons instead of letting those moments make you doubtful about your goals. If you're new to this carnivore lifestyle and you're feeling overwhelmed or just lonely on your journey to health, I welcome you all to come join my community, the Steak and Butter Gang. It is completely off social media and it is truly a safe haven to share your updates ask your questions and get help and support from my team of amazing carnivore coaches and from the amazing community of passionate members. We host 30 day carnivore challenges within the steak and butter gang every single month. And the upcoming month, I will be inviting on some phenomenal guest speakers to answer questions and inspire. As you can see on the screen, I will be bringing on Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Tony Hampton, Dr. Robert Kiltz, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, and coach Rebecca Heishman. You'll also of course be able to work closely closely with Coach Raymond and Coach Emily throughout each month's challenge. For more details and to directly join us, you can visit the URL shown on the screen, spgmeetup.com, or check out the links down below in the description box. In case you still needed proof that the carnivore diet actually works, check out my last video where I give you the hard facts behind why this diet is backed by tens of thousands of success stories. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the bell and notifications to not miss my future videos. And again, if you're interested in a convenient and cheap way to shop for carnivore staples, ingredients, and household supplies, I highly recommend checking out Thrive Market by going to the URL shown on the screen, thrivemarket.com slash steak and butter gal, or by checking out the links down below in the description box. I'll see you in my next video. SPG out. Thank you.